All right, welcome back to Auto Trading Planet. I'm Paul, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can develop a message box in MQL5 that asks the user if he wants to place a trade or not. So that's a very convenient way to uh, allow for semi-automated trading. The user can click on either yes or no, and if he clicks on yes, then the trade gets automatically placed. So this allows for semi-automated trading, but also limits the actions that you have to perform. As you can see right here, I've just created an empty expert advisor. And so for the sake of this tutorial, I will develop a very simple expert advisor that uh, asks if the user wants to go long, if the previous bar is a bullish bar, or if the user wants to go short, if the previous bar was a bearish bar. So let's start out up here in the global scope and let's just include the uh, trade.mqh. So uh, this is optional. If you have your own uh, functions for trade placements, then you don't need to import the uh, trade.mqh. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to import it and create an object called trade. And because this EA will only trade on a new bar, I'm also going to create two additional variables, an array of type MQL rates and a U long called last bar. And then inside the on init function, we just have to set the array as a series so that new elements are stored at index zero. And then inside the on tick function, we can use the copy rates function to copy the uh, previous bar data into the array for the current symbol and current period starting at index zero. We want to copy, say, for the last five bars and into our bar array. And now we can just check if the time of the current candle does not equal the time stored in the last bar variable. If that's the case, then we have a new bar. We can save the time of the current period in the variable. But if that's not the case, then we can just return because we only want to check for trading conditions on a new bar. And as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, the goal is to uh, check if the last candle was bullish or bearish and then ask the user if he wants to open a trade. So here we can just check if the close of the previous bar is above the open. If that's the case, then we have a bullish candle. And now we can actually use a message box. So first of all, let's uh, decide what type of text we want to display. So let's just say message box text as a string and for example, we could say place a buy order on and then the current symbol. And now we can create the actual message box. So this message box returns an integer indicating how the user decided. So we could, for example, create a integer called place trade and then we can say is equal to message box. Then we have to pass the text, which we've just created. So message box text. Then we can uh, pass a caption. So for example, uh, place a trade. And then we can decide what type of message box it should be. So here we can just use the message box yes or no because the user can either say yes I want to place the trade or he can click on no or just close the window 
but we want to check if the uh, user said yes. So for that, we can uh, inside an if statement access the place trade variable and check if this variable is equal to id yes. So this means that the user clicked on yes, so he wants to place the trade. And now we can just actually place the trade. So as I've said at the beginning, I've used the uh, trade.mqh file for, for the placement of the trade, but you can uh, use your own functions. And so here we have to pass the volume, the price. So I want to place a pending order, a buy stop order at the high of the previous bar. The symbol is the current symbol. The stop loss is the low of the previous bar. I'm not going to, or yes, I'm going to place a take profit. Yeah, for the take profit, let's just say uh, the distance between the high and the low of the previous bar. And of course we have to add this distance to the high. Then we can say uh, order time day. So the order expires at the end of the day. So we don't need to pass a specified expiration date. So we can say zero and we can pass a comment like let's say by stop. And that's it for the trade placement. So now we can go ahead and do the same thing for a short trade. So we want to detect a bearish candle. That means the close is below the open. And in fact, we can just copy the code from above. Place a sell order. The message box is exactly the same. And then if the user says yes, we can place a sell stop at the low of the previous bar for the current symbol. The stop is at the high of the previous bar and the take profit low minus the distance between the high and the low and change the text. And that's actually it, so we can compile. And you can see there are no errors and now we can test the strategy. And uh, so that's one problem of uh, semi-automated trading. You cannot use the strategy tester, so you cannot have a, a pop-up message box. So that's why we have to use an actual chart. All right, so here I am on the 15-minute uh, chart of the dollar yen. And that's just wait in less than a minute, there will be a uh, signal. So probably a buy signal given the candle that is forming right now. And let me just, it opened on a different uh, monitor, but you can see place a trade, place a buy order, and let's just say yes. And you can see we've just placed a buy stop order with the correct uh, stop loss and the correct take profit. So that's a very easy way to um, allow for semi-automated trading. Of course, you can make your strategies much more complex. That was just a very simple example for the sake of this tutorial. So yeah, if you've learned anything new, feel free to uh, like. And if you want to learn how to develop your own automated trading systems, then make sure to subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.